Hello everyone, and welcome to another Swordsman Online tutorial with Mr. Poet. Today we're going to be talking about the features of self-cultivation. It is a very important feature that allows you to uh, basically grind on monsters while you are not present at your computer, or um, if you need to go somewhere you can grind experience or even um, collect mob mo materials off of these monsters to uh, use for crafting. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, first of all, you get self-cultivation at about level 30, and when you get to that point, you can check and see if you have it available by clicking or pressing N and going to Available. And it should appear in this section right here under School, and it should be a quest name self-cultivation or something similar to that. And as you can see, I have a lot currently, so you wouldn't be able to see it on mine, even though I already have the quest, but... <clears throat> that's where it would be okay um, now when you complete that quest you will get an icon that looks something like this a meditation icon that appears in your top in the top right corner of your screen and um, you will be able to click it and set up your settings for self cultivation now what I'm going to do is go through each and every single setting to make sure that everybody understands the full length of self cultivation and how to set it up properly um, starting with the radius the radius d determines how far your character will roam while self-cultivating, which basically means, for example, say I start in this spot, the character will attempt to not go farther than 15 meters in each direction in order to find a monster to kill for self-cultivation purposes. This is very useful if you are planning to keep your character in the same position or the general same area for your self-cultivation -cult duration. <clears throat> and it can be set anywhere from 15 to 50, I just keep it at 15 so they don't roam like extremely far from where I want them to self-cultivate. It's very useful if you want some, them to avoid attacking the wrong monster or putting themselves in a dangerous position if they are red name, for instance. But I will get a little bit into that later. This next one is when to stop cultivation. The first one is dying. So basically when you have this checked, Whenever your character dies five times, or however many times you set it, <clears throat> it will cancel the cultivation. This is very useful if you don't want your character to lose a lot of durability on their gear. Also, if your character keeps dying to monsters, it prevents, well, endless death pretty much. So it's a good thing to have. Also, if your character runs out of potions, he'll probably die five times anyway in a row, so... It's a good thing to have for canceling that out. Um, this next one is if PvP killed zero amount of times or how many times you set, cultivation will end. Um, say there's somebody that's PKing you, hunting you down, wants you dead, wants your guild dead. This is a very useful setting to have because whatever you set this to, however many times you get PK'd, it will uh, cancel out the self-cultivation as well as the first one. Well, if you're a red name, for instance, this is a very useful setting to have on because you don't want to continuously lose gear while self-cultivating. Because if you are a pink name, you have a chance of dropping gear, but if you're a red name, you will most likely always drop gear. And um, to get these pink and red names that I speak of, you must be an outlaw or change your PvP settings to outlaw and begin killing a bunch of random people. Uh, or people that don't attack you first. Okay, next one is you will automatically defend yourself in PvP. That's not really a setting, that's just a spoken thing. Um, you will also be able to use skills in PvP if your character is attacked during self cultivation. I believe whatever you set in this menu right here is what skills they will use, but I'll get a little bit, I'll get into that a little bit later. Let's continue. This next one is how many minutes without earning any experience will cancel the cultivation. So basically what that means is if you are cultivating for 30 minutes, for instance, and you do not gain any experience, um, your cultivation will cancel. And the only time you will not be gaining any experience is if uh, your world energy is uh, down to zero. World energy is basically energy that is consumed when killing monsters in world map or dungeons and you will receive no experience if world energy is at zero. It refreshes at 8 o'clock every day 
so eight o'clock server time um for those of you who are on the west coast of the u.s such as myself that would be about six o'clock in the morning so yeah 6 a.m is uh when your uh, world energy would reset um, i'm not sure how it is for you other time zone people but um you can just go off the pdt standard uh time um what I tend to do if um because I I'm an early worker I get get up early in the morning to go to work so I wake up at about uh, 4 a.m. and um, by the time I'm heading to work it's about five o'clock so what I'll do is I'll turn this off and that will allow my character to keep on cultivating and by the time six o'clock comes around he'll already be cultivating while I'm at work and therefore he will be gaining experience while I'm at work. Now for that hour in between 5 and 6 he will not gain any experience if he does not have any world energy but it is still a good thing to set up if you're not going to be back for a little while. Would put your character to better use than no use at all. This next one is target settings. I haven't fully tested this yet but I'm assuming what it does is if you check that and you're cultivating and a monster or something of the sort does not die within a minute um, you will ignore that target and target something else. Uh, I don't really see the point of that because usually the monsters always die unless they decide to sp spawn some really, really big event boss like a gigantic mammoth or something. I don't know. Very unlikely, but in that situation, then you would probably want that. Unless you want to self-cultivate self on a world boss, which is not a good idea. Um... The next thing is enable companion collecting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and summon my companion. I'll show you what that is. So basically your companions come with the pickup skills sometimes. When you um, when you first tame a companion, it'll show what skills they come with. Um, and mine came with a pickup skill. If your companion does not have this skill, you are able to teach your companion that skill via, I believe the cash shop has a item for it. Okay. Yeah, collecting guide right here. So this will give them the pickup uh, skill, which will allow them to pick up items that are dropped on the floor by mobs. Um, if you do not get it from the cash shop, there is also a companion trainer in major cities that will be able to sell you the skill book, I believe, for a certain amount of um, bound gold, I believe. And you might also be able to get it from events and stuff of the sort. Um, this is also a very good thing to have if your companion is uh, out at the time because if you're cultivating your companion can just pick up the items as they drop and your character can keep on cultivating without having to sacrifice time to pick up the items himself or herself um, the next setting is to auto distribute items to party members now what that means is if you're self cultivating with the party um, whenever you guys kill a monster it will equally distribute the items received from that that particular monster between the party depending on how many people you have it is a very useful thing to have if you're cultivating in a group or you know just uh, yeah cultivating in a group basically um, the next thing is to automatically loot nearby drop items uh, basically whenever a monster drops an item while you're self cultivating your character will go over, go over and pick it up you should usually only have this on if your companion is not out or if your companion is on low energy your companion skills do deteriorate um, energy, which you can show right here. So this blue blue bar right here is your companion's energy, and when that runs out, they will not be able to cast any more companion skills. And the next setting are under loot management. First one is auto sell sundry items. Sundry items are referred to as junk items, such as uh, it's items that stack to ninety nine but have no real purpose in the game. They're just there to sell. I do not have an item in my inventory to show as an example, but that's basically what they are. Um, so if you want to earn money through cultivation, mostly bound gold, then that's what you would do. You would put that on and then whenever whenever your character has an abundance of it, it would sell it at uh, one of the major cities. Um, the next one is auto sell fine items and below or, or common items. What that means is it's basically talking about gear, because usually the gear gears will only be the colored items. Um, whenever your uh, your primary bag is full, um, your character will go to a major city and sell whatever gear you have in there. 
Um, it's a useful thing to have if you don't plan on upgrading your equipment or you just are really desperate for money. Very useful thing to have. The next tab is uh, skills. And basically what this means is uh, you will be able to set up a desired skill bar for your for your cultivation to be able to uh, cast these skills and um, basically whatever you put on there, your character's going to do. And I will show you just in a second. Here we go. So basically this is what it looks like. Um, your character will cast anything that you put on there. And, and they, I believe they will cast it in the certain order that you put them on there. Yep. Just in that specific order like that. Alright. Um, one important thing to note is you always want to put a auto attack on there. In this box right here. Just go ahead and drag that down there. Um, obviously you don't want to be cultivating without an auto attack because your character would just be going around uh, using skills and that would not be good. You might die a lot. Um, one thing I checked under this is auto cast combat focus skill. If you remember in the tutorial you were uh, on a bridge and there was a bunch of spiders coming towards you and it wanted you to cast a skill that made you click the left and right mouse button at the same time. That would be your combat focus skill or ultimate as some call it. I just check that off because um, whenever you're cultivating you tend to kill a lot of monsters and hit a lot of monsters at the same time so the best way to uh, to spend all that uh, focus you get combat focus which can be seen right down here if you have the option checked on the gameplay menu is uh, by doing that and it also kills a lot of monsters in a in a short amount of time very short amount of time so it's a very useful thing to have on Next thing is um, your cast charge skill. So I'll provide a demonstration for this. Um, say you have a skill that has two different modes, one that you can tap it and one that you can charge it. And what I mean by that is it'll have a different effect depending on what you do with it. For instance, I'm going to cast this skill right now on, an, on a monster. Watch what happens when I charge it. I dash at them like that. But if I were to tap it, it would have a different effect entirely. As you will see in just a moment. There we go. Okay, here I go. I'm going to tap it now. There we go. So that's what that setting does. Cast charge skill. So if you want your skills to be going off fast, like without charging at all, you would uncheck that, which I should have unchecked anyway because most of my skills are chargeable. And um, the next one is auto assign combos. I'm guessing if you have a combo already set up for your class, then it will automatically deter to that, and uh, it will put that into play when you're cultivating as well. I haven't really tested it out because I do not have any combos set up, but I believe uh, if you do have a combo set up in here, then it will uh, go off of that. The next thing is the restore settings, and the first one is player HP. Whenever your HP gets below this point, or your companion self for that matter, you can use a certain skill. Usually only works if you have a healing skill. I mean, that's the only time you would really want to even use it anyway. So um, if you have one, great. You can put that in there. If not, then you're going to have to go with healing, which is in the next tab. And this seems to be the place that most people get confused off of. So let me go ahead and go into great detail about this. The first one, character healing. This is your HP potion uh, menu. It's very important you know what you're doing here. Um, basically, if your character gets below 50% HP, he will use whatever you put inside of this. This box right here, which will be my health potions. Um, and they also have to be off cooldown, obviously, for them to be used. But yeah, he will use that anytime that his health goes below 50%. And the same for chi potions. He will automatically use the potion I put in there, which will be that. And the same goes for food. Whatever I put in there will be used. I do not have any health food right now, but um, if I did, I would put it right there. And the same applies for the chi food as well. So any kind of chi food that I wanted to put in here, I would just put right there. And it would use it automatically when he's below 30% chi. It's good to keep your potions above your food because the food, I find it really takes a long time for that to regenerate any of your stats. Ooh, a bull. So um, it's better to have potions going first rather than food because they'll just be wasting money at that point. Um, 
The next thing is auto select replacement restoration items. You can select either best items first or worst item first. What that means is basically whenever the selected item that you put here runs out, anything else that you have in your inventory, say it had like level 10 HP potions or level 10 G potions, it would use that instead. If that was my best or worst, that is. And the same goes for food. So it's good to make sure that before you even start cultivating, you have uh, a decent amount of pots, a decent amount of backup pots, and at least some food. It's a good thing to have. And here's the next setting, which is very important. Auto buy when recovery items are not enough. Basically, when you run out of any of these and you have no more backups that are auto selected, your character will go to any major city and will buy these potions and whatever else you have selected, like the food, the chi food, and the chi pots. And it will come right back here and begin cultivating once again. Very useful thing to have if you have the money to do so. If you're not really high on money right now, I would I would not really worry about that too much until you started making a lot of money. But um, that's what that will do for you. The next one is companion healing. If you happen to have a companion healing item in your inventory, which I do not right now, um, when its health got below 50%, it would auto-recover. And the same for Drive, which is basically their energy, I believe. If that got below 50%, then you would uh, recover that with whatever energy potion you had in your inventory. And the last one is Loyalty. And it would use one of these Loyalty potions, which increases their loyalty by 50, if their loyalty ever goes down below uh, 50. And Loyalty is very important, because if it, if it gets below 50, then your companion will not be able to be summoned until the loyalty goes back up. So it is good to have these on standby at all times, just in case that happens, which I should use right now. Okay, the next one is the rest settings. So when your HP is below 20%, let's say you run out of stamina pots and, I mean, I'm sorry, let's say you run out of health pots and chi pots, your character will begin meditating, like so, when your HP is below 20%, and he will begin draining stamina to fuel that as well. And the next one is stop at zero world energy, or however much world energy you have. Basically, that means whenever your world energy gets down to zero, or whatever you have it set at, your character will be will stop cultivating. Um, like I said before, if you're an early worker and didn't want him to stop cultivating, him or her, then you would turn that off, along with the 30 minutes without earning any experience will count the cultivation option. Turning both of those off will allow your character to cultivate past their desired point so that you will be able to continue gaining experience when the time comes or materials <laughs> the next one is a companion skill durability and basically when your weapon gets below whatever percent you have set it will automatically fix it for you be sure to note this is only a companion skill it will not bring your character to any major city and bring it to a vendor and repair the items for you this is only a companion skill and your cultivation will cancel if the durability reaches zero on your weapon. The next tab is your gear upgrade. Basically what that means is if you have this selected, when your bag gets full, it will automatically use gear in your inventory, mostly greens, to upgrade your equipment. And you can have it to set you can have it set to moderately upgrade all equipped gear, or you can have it set to only upgrade your weapon or first upgrade your weapon, or only, like I said before. And you can even set it to what setting you want it to upgrade to, like plus 10 or plus 4. It really depends on your style and what you really want. You can also set it to uh, upgrade different pieces of, of your equipped gear, which I find is very useful. But I just keep it on moderate just because I generally want to upgrade all my gear at the same time. But you might have a different opinion on that. But that is all of the features of the self-cultivation so just make sure you take your time with this when you do it and um, try and set up a self-cultivation that best suits your style all right folks but that is all for today I thank you so much for joining me I'm gonna try and make another tutorial video before the night hits us but um, I really hope you enjoyed and you guys have a wonderful day bye bye